Today's video is a break from our glider series where I will be explaining everything that was discussed in the meeting Fund9 had with Translink, including a few extra details that our social media followers didn't get to hear directly. On Thursday the 15th of June 2023, Funda9 and five of Translink's leading executives held a meeting via Microsoft Teams. This meeting consisted of myself, Funda9, Graham Smith, who originally spurred the idea of meeting, however he never gave me his official role, but I do believe it is something similar to the head of public relations, Brendan Harkin, head of portfolio management, Helen Halliday, who is the senior program manager for Translink and also the head of phase 3 of the Corain to Londonderry track renewal, Hilton Parr, head of real customer services, and Connor McLaurin, project manager of Belfast Grand Central Station. The first thing that we quickly jumped into discussion about was the Knockmore line. I was told that the Knockmore line was first properly addressed in the 2015 utilisation strategy, where they figured that it would be best to reopen it in the medium term. The plan was then revisited in 2020, which further reiterated their ideas from five years prior. The All Island Rail Review will also certainly progress the need for the development to a state of cruciality. Translink stated that the government has provided them with enough funds to undertake a proper feasibility study. They then went on to say that, This feasibility study will be the largest study we have ever undertaken. Translink hoped to appoint a consultant to undertake the feasibility study to reopen the Knockmore Line within the next six months with the feasibility study taking six to eight months to complete. Additionally, the overall time frame for the reopening of the Knockmore line is around four to six years from now. All of the pre-2003 stations may not return when the line reopens. This is down to the fact that the feasibility study may identify that having only a railway station at Crumlin and the International Airport is optimal for journey times and profit. I was told that Crumlin station is essentially dead certain to return, but Glenavy and Ballanderry are up in the air. Back in 2011, Glenavy led Crumlin in population by about 500 people, but Crumlin has grew in population quite significantly in the past 10 years. At the same time however, Glenavy has also seen major new housing developments grow the village to about double the size of itself in 2003. In my personal opinion, I would say that Glenavy has the best fighting chance it could possibly have to see its railway station restored, even if it is just a halt but Ballanderry doesn't look terribly likely due to the minute population of around 250 people. I sincerely hope that Translink seriously consider reopening Glenavy and Ballanderry stations, even if the feasibility study isn't too sure about it. After all, not restoring the rail connections to these people who lost them 20 years ago would be the next greatest injustice for our railway network. Furthermore, tripling the track between Lisburn and Belfast is on the cards for the long term, as the All Island Rail Review has pointed out that with a reopened Knockmore line and a reopened Portadown to Armagh connection, the current two track wide line won't be able to handle the extra traffic and thus full tripling will be necessary. Partial tripling is also in the works, as when the Knockmore line is reopened, Translink will push to triple the line from Grand Central Station, past Adelaide and up until the bridge before Balmoral Station. One of the major revelations is how the transition between Great Victoria Street Station and Belfast Grand Central Station will work. My most loyal subscribers will remember from the What is Belfast Grand Central Station video that I pointed out the two potential ways I could envision the transition happening. It turns out that I was wrong about both of my points. Great Victoria Street's transition to Grand Central Station will take place in Q4 2024, which is the months of October, November or December. The transition will be seamless for buses, but for real it's another story. In essence, the entire station and all of its essential components will be built. Then, in Q4 2024, the bus station will be open to the public overnight. When that happens, Great Victoria Street will be closed permanently and demolished along with the Boyne Bridge and any other structures. During the closure, 
all trains will no longer call to the centre of Belfast, so all GVS terminations will instead happen at Lanyon Place, and the Porter Down to Bangor line will avoid GVS entirely, taking a right turn at the Westlink Junction. Track works to connect Grand Central Station to the main line will then begin after, which will see a blockade in all real traffic between Lisburn and Lanyon Place. However, there will be a real replacement bus service during the entire period of closure to minimise the damage and disruption caused. During the closure and track alignment, Durham Street will be repaved at grade with the new station, and Great Victoria Street's track beds will be filled in and paved over also. Once the tracks are aligned and exterior finished, Grand Central Station will start to take its first real passengers in early 2025. Additionally, Grand Central Station's surrounding areas, Weaver's Cross, is yet to have its intricate designs and details finalised, but there is no date for when Weaver's Cross will begin construction. Another development I find close to my heart is the potential for increasing frequency between Belfast and Londonderry by way of line duelling. Translink stated that, duelling of the line may be possible in the future to increase frequency and that the All Island Rail Review may also suggest it. They stated that any duelling will happen far in the future, likely because of current budget constraints and lack of government support for railway developments. Redueling of the Monkstown to Ballymena section of the line is far more likely much sooner, as Translink wish to increase the frequency of the Ballymena to Belfast section, which would allow for them to finally open a Temple Patrick railway station at the Ballymartin Park and Ride. The reason for this is that the Belfast to London Derry line sees trains get to their highest level of crowdedness at Ballymena and Antrim, as well and vice versa. This new Belfast to Ballymena service would also run at a frequency of two trains per hour in both directions, which in total with the existing Belfast to Londonderry service would account for six trains per hour to and from Belfast. However, if the Knockmore line was to be reopened, then duelling the Ballymena to Monkstown section might not be completely necessary, and instead the Belfast to Londonderry service could operate on an alternating pattern every hour, with each train taking a different route into Belfast, which would free up space on the timetable along the Bleach Green line and allow for a Ballymena to Belfast service with a new station at Temple Patrick without the need for complete duelling. I will say though that all of these things should happen. The Knockmore line taking every other train from Londonderry would provide the North Coast with direct trains to Belfast International Airport, whilst duelling the Ballymena to Monkstown section of the track would allow for a more flexible network even with the additional Ballymena to Belfast services. We briefly discussed the Armagh to Portadown line and its reopening status. So far, the Armagh City, Banbridge and Craigavon Borough Council have undertaken a feasibility study into reopening the railway connection between Armagh City and Portadown, to which Translink has fed into it. Translink stated that, for this feasibility study to lead to a reopening of the line, there would need to be additional funding and clear executive support for the expansion before it can be moved on. No further comment was given, however, what this entails to me is that the Armagh City Council's feasibility study has produced a positive result, and such a railway connection is essentially ready to be rebuilt with the right amount of funding and government support. We then discussed the enterprise and line electrification, but since they tie into one another I'm counting it as a single point. The new enterprise tender has gone out and coach building companies will compete for the contract. Translink stated that no funds have been provided yet for the new rolling stock. However, I managed to find the tender contract online, which states the estimated cost for the new stock is 480 million euros or 410 million pounds. The contract will be a joint venture between Northern Ireland Railways and Air and Road Erin and will see the new rolling stock put into use come 2026. The new rolling stock will be by mode, meaning they will initially run on diesel until the electrification of the line is completed, after which they will be converted to electric only with the diesel engines removed entirely. The reason for this is that the new Enterprise trains are set to last 30 years, as did their predecessor, so having them equipped to adapt to future changes in railway technology is key to getting the most bang for your buck. In terms of electrification itself, the network will initially be electrified from the border near Newry to Bangor, with Irish Rail electrifying from Drogheda to the border near Dundalk. This will create an entirely electrified line between Bangor and Dublin. However, the Enterprise service will not be extending to Bangor, so please don't get your hopes up. The electrification of the Bangor line I was surprised to hear, but it coincides with Translink's plan to procure 15 new three-car bi-mode sets between 2027 and 2029, allowing for the first ever fully electrified NIR services. No additional details were given on how or when electrification would begin, but if I had to make an educated guess, I would say sometime between 2026 and 2029, as why else would they purchase so many bi-mode trains during that time frame? The conversation then slowed down to a more walking pace with the conversation of the Translink Future Ticketing System. 
This system was due to launch in 2020, but due to delays caused by the pandemic and other issues, it progressed at a snail's pace. TransLink stated that ticket vending machines TVMs, will be coming to all railway stations in Northern Ireland before the end of 2023. Then, in 2024, automated ticket barriers will be installed at all major stations. What I assume they mean by this is that if your local station has a building structure that you must pass through to get to the platform, then it will be fitted with an automated barrier. But if your local station is only a halt with no building, then you will not have a barrier and will need to enter the platform to get your ticket. One oddity though, is that at most stations, like Antrim for example, there are obvious ticket machine shelters and spaces predetermined for these upcoming additions to our network, but they are all on the platform. So how would one get onto the platform to get your ticket when the barrier requires you to scan your ticket to enter the platform? My best assumption is that the barriers will only be in operation during station opening hours, as a lot of stations on the NIR network, Antrim included, close after about 5pm. When the station is out of hours, the building obviously won't be accessible, meaning you can't get a ticket. So this means the barriers will be constantly open whilst the station is closed, meaning you just enter the platform and use the TVM like a regular halt. Additionally, they told me that contact Contactless payments and ticket validators will also be introduced within that time frame, and the new ePurse system will also be launched too. The new ePurse system will be similar to the Oyster card and will require you to make an account with TransLink. Once that is done, it will compile your journeys each time you tap on or tap off at each station. Then, when you go to pay for your accumulated journeys, the app will offer you the best price possible. The way I take this is that it may work on a system that offers you lower prices the more frequently you travel. Finally, the TransLink team decided to hit me with a curveball that I had no idea was coming, but I had heard rumours that this was the case. Shortly, as they stated, TransLink will be announcing new railway stations at two of the busiest areas on the Northern Ireland Railways network, Lurgan and Ballymena. Lurgan and Ballymena are both stations in dire need of modernisation, so this report is very welcome and I absolutely cannot wait to see what the designs they have in mind for the revamped stations are. Night trains are also planned, but currently there is not enough funding to undertake such a project. Night trains would likely only be on Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays also, as engineers need a window of opportunity to conduct essential maintenance during the night, and their current window was already relatively tiny. This development required me to make a video for my YouTube audience as you people have played a key role in progressing my campaign and giving me the platform I have to where I get to bring you information such as this. Part 2 of the Glider series will be slightly delayed because of this video but I assure you it is worth the wait. And as always, thank you for watching and goodbye.